Hi, I'm Fei He from Tsinghua University. Today, I'm glad to introduce our recent work on combination analysis for involving programs. Combination is a fundamental property of programs. There is a lot of work on proven combination or non combination from different angles. However, all existing approaches target a single program version only. As we all well know, programs are always evolving. A lot of program versions are produced during its life cycle. We thus address in this paper the termination of analysis for evolving programs. The key question we want to answer in this paper is that if we are given the termination arguments for the previous program version, can we reuse it? And how should we reuse it in the termination analysis of the current program version? Let's look at this simple example, which contains a elastic loop. Following the classical approach for termination analysis, this program can be represented as a bulky automaton. And in this bulky automaton, each node corresponds to a location of this program, and each edge corresponds to a basic block of this uh, program. Of course, this bulky automata accepts a set of omega traces. To prove the program is terminating, we need only to show how omega traces accepted by this bulky automata are terminating. In the following, we use B0, B1, B2, and B3 to represent the basic blocks of the program. And the alphabet of this bulky automata is a set of all these blocks. To prove the termination of all omega traces of this automata, we first take a last shift path from this automata. And then we try to prove the termination of this single path. If we can prove it using some rank function, we then try to generalize this single path to a certified module. A certified module may, may accept a set of omega traces, and it must guarantee that all accepted traces are terminating, and they must share the same terminating argument. In this way, we may construct a set of certified modules. If we can prove that all omega traces accepted by this program automata are covered by the union of these certified modules, recall that the traces accepted by each certified module are terminating. We thus can safely conclude that all omega traces of the program automata are terminating. Note that a certified module is allowed to conform to the program structure. For example, consider this certified module. It accepts all trees from B1 and then repeated B2. However, these trees cannot be simulated on, on the program automata. Also, there is a tree on the program automata that starts with B0 and then repeat B1 and B3. And definitely, these trees cannot be simulated on the uh, M0. So a certified module can accept the extra traces of the program automata and can also reject the accepting traces of the program automata. And this is not a shortage of the certified module. Actually, the freedom in recognizing omega traces makes the certified module much reusable even when the program changes. Let's assume the program evolves into a new version. In this new version, only one statement is changed to this statement. Note that this change is non-trivial because it modifies the verb variable y. And this verb variable is used in the ring function of fxy. 
and it is also used in this loop condition. As a result, this change has the effect of the loop behavior of these programs. Recall that the ranking function is the most is the most important part for the combination analysis. If possible, we would very much like to reuse the previous generated rank functions. However, at this point, we cannot decide if this rank function works for the new program version or not. Moreover, if we look at the building automata of the new program version, we find that the block B2 is changed. We call it B2 prime. The whole alphabet also changes. We call it sigma prime. Note that the certified modules are generated with the old program version. They are defined over the old alphabet, not the new alphabet. So the Omega language of M0 and M1 are incomparable to that of the loop 1. These two certified modules as a whole cannot be applied to the current analysis. However, if we look into the graph structure of the certified modules, many interesting information can be identified. During the construction of the certified module, each node is labeled with a predicate. For example, this node is labeled with 50, and this node is labeled with 51. These two predicates are listed here. And the generation and the construction of the certified module can also guarantee that for each edge, the two predicates on these two nodes and the block on this edge form a valid whole triple. Let's consider the edge from L1 to L2 on the block B1. The valid horn triple is phi 0, B1, and phi 1. The validity of this horn triple just tells, tells a fact about the semantics of B1. Apparently, this horn triple is valid as long as B1 is not changed. And in the new program version, because B1 is indeed not changed, so this horn triple is reusable. By reusing this horn triple, we need a lot to check its validity again, and the number of invocations to the SMP server is thus reduced. Moreover, if we look at the predicate 51, the rank function x minus y is embraced in this predicate. In other words, by reusing this horn triple, we also reuse this rank function. Because that the synthesis of rank function is among the most time-consuming operations in the termination analysis. Reusing this information can save a great deal of effort. Let's consider another edge from L2 to L2. The valid horn triple is phi1, b2, and phi1. However, this horn triple is not applicable to the new program version because b2 has been changed. Here is the reuse procedure of our approach. We apply this procedure to each of the previous generated certified modules. First, we extract the predicates and the horn trips from this module and we get two sets, U and H. Second, we consider the difference between the two program versions and delete the inappraisable predicates and the inappraisable horn trips from U and H. Consider this example, since the block B2 is changed, these two horn trips are deleted from H. There is no predicate be deleted from this example. A predicate should be deleted if it uses some variable that is 
undefined for the new program version. Thirdly, the new program version may contain some new blocks, which should be tested for addition of new home triples. Consider the example program. For the changed block B2 prime, we added two new home triples. Lastly, with the final predicate set U and the final home trip set H, we construct a new module called the reuse module. Specifically, for each predicate in U, we create a node in our, in our reuse module. And for each home trip in H, we create a edge in this reuse module. We can prove that the the reuse module is a certified module. That is, all accepted omega traces by this reuse module are terminating. And certainly, this reuse module is over the new, new alphabet. So this reuse module can be used for the termination analysis of the new program version. We implemented our approach on top of the U optimizer and evaluated our approach on a real-world benchmark. All, all programs are connected from the code forces. We grouped the programs by the same cont contestant for a certain program into a run set. There are 276 run sets and 611 reversions. We compared each pair of adjacent reversions in each run set. Results are shown in this table, where the baseline is the original U optimizer, and the reuse is our approach. This column shows the number of reused modules from the previous generated certified modules. And this column shows the average speed up of our approach on each run set. These results show very good performance of our approach. The average speed up is 3.08, is, is 3 and the average number of reused modules is 5.68. This experiment tests the impact of program changes to the efficiency of our approach. We use this formula for, for calculating the, pro, the degree of program changes. Then we divide the difference into 10, 10 ranges and count the number of programs in each range and summarize the average speed up for the programs in each range. Uh, interestingly, from this figure, we didn't find a clear relation between the uh, degree of program change and the efficiency of uh, our approach. For example, in this range, the, uh, the degree of program change is as high as 60%. However, uh, our approach can still get a five times speed up. In other words, our approach seems to be uh, insensitive to the degree of program changes. Okay, here is an uh, example. The right version is obtained from the left version. This seems very different because some of the variables are renamed, some statements are changed, and even the structure is also changed. However, over the 26 the certified modules for the left version, 25 can be reused. And finally, we got a over 13 times speed up. To test the impact of change types to the efficiency of our approach, we used from C to differentiate the loop relevant and the loop irrelevant changes. We then compared the efficiency of our approach with these two kinds of changes. From this table, we observed that our approach had a larger acceleration 
for loop invariant changes. This is quite understandable. We also observed that our approach gets considerable acceleration for the loop relevant changes. This result would lead to wide applicability of our approach for various program changes. In conclusion, we proposed the first approach for automation analysis of involving programs. A transformation-based procedure for reusing the certified modules was developed. It uses a fine-grained reusing strategy and is applicable to various program changes. Experimental results showed dramatic improvement of our approach. That's all. Thanks.